I wasn't very old when I first saw it. Maybe five or six or so. It was a long time ago, but I remember it quite well. The whole experience of it seemed like a dream. Like it never really happened, and it was in my head, I've got memory perhaps. I can't remember exactly where the place was, just what it looked like, and the same for the people. No names or faces. Maybe they weren't even there. An addition by my memory. But they don't matter much. They never did. The only thing that matters is the Kelpie. It was summertime, and I was playing at the bike by my grandmother's house. I'd been sent there for the warm months. <laughs> my mum thought it was better for me if I breathed the warm humid air than the city smog. She opened my grandma's home down south. She was a fiery old girl, second generation from Scotland. Often she would tell me stories about the local locks and bogs and the creatures that lived in the waters and those that lived in the trees. One of my favorites was the selkie, beautiful seal people that would change shape as they swam in the ocean. My most favorite, however, was the unicorn. I've always wanted to see one. It touched its lovely white coat, but I knew they weren't real, just stories. One afternoon, I went to the bayou to catch some fish. I was proud of myself for making a pole and stick the string. My grandmother laughed and said if I caught a fish, she would cook it. I was determined and told her I would be home before sundown. I took my pole and put a small bit of bacon at the end of the line. My concentration was broken by some music from nowhere. I looked until I found the source of the music. A little man was sitting on the branch of a tree, playing a wooden fiddle. He stopped when he saw me and smiled. No words went between us, but he continued to play. The music was wonderful, and I asked him if I could play it. He said I could if I got in the water. My grandma warned me against that, but I ignored her as she might think it was strange. I went back the next day, pole in hand. I promised my grandmother I would catch a bigger fish. This time I heard laughter and saw three beautiful girls on a rock. They looked a few years older than me and they sat brushing their hair. They were beautiful and I sat on the bank watching them. Could they be the selfies from my grandma's stories? Their skin was pale and seemed to glow in the dark. The next day I went back to the bayou for the third time. This was my final visit as I was going home the next morning. There was a white horse in the bayou and I went in the water wading up to my knees. It began to swim to me. I could see it like it would swim to the bank. It stopped though. I couldn't move, feeling calm even though it was bigger than me. It looked over its shoulder as if it was offering me a ride. I forgot my grandma's warning and gone on its back. Nearly started to submerge, the water went up to my shoulders, then my head as it started to suffocate me. The water was getting higher and higher. I felt like my lungs would be crushed by the pressure. Frantically I left off. I reached for the horse, but it was gone. That night, my grandmother told me the story of the Kelpie. It was a water demon in horse form. It could take other forms like little people or beautiful maidens. People would ride it and it drowned them. I had to go to the bayou one last time. There was a ripple in the water that disappeared. Kelpie attacked me again, but I blinded him with a box cutter. The next morning, I saw another little boy going to the bayou. No doubt thinking he would return before sundown. Oh yes. He certainly will return.